The best money making method is Kudra. Kudra can make upwards of 120 million coins an hour, but not a whole lot of people know exactly what to do in each tier or how to do some of the mechanics such as stunning. Which is why in today's video I'm making a guide on how to do every single thing related to Kudra in every single Kudra tier. Stuff from the gear requirements, the combat levels, the strategies, to metas, to perk classes, to how to stun properly, pretty much everything. And I'm also going over how much money each floor generally makes. Before we get into this video though, I have a giveaway for you guys. If you're able to hit 22 and a half subscribers by the end of January, I will do a giveaway for 200 mil. So, sub fast. Either way, let's get into tier 1, timestamps, you can probably see. Tier 1 is the easiest tier in Kudra, yet the gear rec is still insanely high. There are only 3 options for weapons. Obviously, hype is the best, and you will probably need at least one of them on your team if you want to do it. But at this stage, it is not a must. Second best weapon is Midas Staff. Not much needs to be said, it's insanely good for clearing, and in my personal opinion, better than Term. Final weapon, Term. It's good, but Hyper Midas Staff is better. As for the armor, you will either need 3 fourths Storm or Necron, depending on the weapon you are using, with either Wither Goggles or a Necron Helm. For pets, this is a must. You must have a level 100 Blaze, E Drag, or G Drag. Blaze is generally the best option at the stage as it boosts more stats than E-Drag with a boosting vitality, mending, and other stuff while E-Drag does not. It also is a lot cheaper. For other items, you will want a Wand of Atonement, a Florid Zombie Sword, a Magma Rod of any kind, a Wither Cloak, and an Aspect of the End. Also, please, for the love of God, buy a Shop Shortcut. It literally saves lives and it only costs 100,000 coins. Other Misc items you can have but are not yet required include E-Pearls, Gyro Wand, Fire Veil, Spirit Mask, and an Over or Plasma Flux. In addition to that, you'll need to complete the Faction Quest, and if you want to get into good parties, you should have Combat 30-35 to 35 minimum. Now for the classes and basic strategies. There are four classes, Cannoneer, Crowd Control, Specialist, and Support. For majority of the floors, the only class we care about is Specialist. And in Specialist, there's really only two perks that matter. Steady Hands and Ballista Mechanics. Every single person should go Specialist Tier 1. Now for what to do. First phase, you need to gather 6 supplies scattered across the map. You can do this by using a fishing rod to pull them and gather them in. There are 8 possible spawn locations shown on the map here. So each person should get to a corner and be watching those spots to pre-fish before the tentacles become an issue. If you do this right, you should get a pre-fish 90% of the time you try, in basic at least. From here, you can either go grab another supply, or clear. If you don't have a hype, you should definitely go for the second supply. If your party's having trouble with supplies, there is a bunch of methods to help. Number 1. Upgrade Steady Hands. This will help you fish it up faster, and you will need to level this perk for Phase 3 anyways. While reeling it in, you should also spam Aspect of the End on the ground. If a tentacle hits you and you're spamming, you can usually get 1-2 to two more ticks before being flung away, which can save you a bunch of time. Also, if a supply drop is next to many tentacles, you can fish it away to a more open spot or towards Kudra as there isn't any tentacles in that area and Kudra's is going to shoot fireballs at you. Now, another fun thing to help you fish supplies faster, as discovered by Kudra Gang, the Discord server, which, by the way, link in the description, I recommend you guys join. There are areas where you can stand where a tentacle will never hit or grab you. These two areas are these two corner blocks by the square corner shown on screen, However, in order to do this, you must be standing fully flush against the walls of the corner, and when you're watching this video, it might be patched. The second spot is the furthest inward point by the triangle. As you can see on the screen, you'll have to drag the supplies a lot to get it to that specific spot, and it'll probably jump into the lava with a wither cloak or a gyro. But if you can get to the spot, the tentacles don't hit you, unless there's a big one in front of you for the second option. This isn't insanely useful in tier 1, but at tier 4 and 5, it is very good to know. Now onto the second phase. This is where you build the ballista. At this point, you will want to upgrade your ballista mechanic as high as possible and begin to shift hit the items when prompted. There will also be waves of mobs spawning. If you have a hype mage in your group, he should stop hitting for a second and go clear mobs whenever they spawn. This will make it a lot easier for the rest of your party to clear. If you don't have a hype, you can always spam fire veil while building the ballistas to help kill some of the mobs when they get closer. Once you're at 100%, congrats, you're onto the final phase. The best way to do the final phase to kill tier 1 is for every single person to grab fuel cells. This time, you will need 5 fuel cells to power the ballista. Put all your points into steady hands to make it easier. Everyone should gather one fuel, and then the first person to bring the cell back should grab the last one. Everyone else will be working on making sure Kudra doesn't submerge by hitting the orbs into him, 
and this should be clearing the mobs along with this. Once the final fuel cell is in, you can shoot it, and voila. The Ballista insta-kills a tier 1. I usually average 2-3 to three minute runs doing tier 1s, and I can usually make 10-20 to 20 mil on a good day. Now for tier 2. Tier 2 has the exact same gear requirements as tier 1. However, hype is becoming more necessary. This is the last floor that you could potentially do without a Hyperion. And Fire Veil is also highly recommended for some extra damage. The ref needed to do a tier 2 is 1000. You should have at least combat 40 to 45 if you want to get into some good parties using Party Finder. The strategy and comp here is exactly the same as tier 1. The only difference is phase 3. So the first phase is the exact same. You might find tier 1 and tier 2 a little bit harder, but they have the same strategy. The only difference is the third phase. Kudra has more health, and it now takes two shots to kill with the Ballista, meaning you could either have all four people get cells and shoot it twice, which honestly isn't that bad, or you can shoot using the orbs to your advantage. Each orb will spawn from Kudra, and when you hit it into him, it will add time where he is above the ground and not submerged, and it will deal damage to him. If you shoot enough orbs into him to get him to half HP, you only need one Ballista shot, making everything a lot easier. For this, you want two people gathering fuel cells with steady hands and two people shooting the orbs with a short bow or a term. With people shooting the orbs, there is zero reason to get steady hands if you're not going to be getting supplies, and as such, you want to get the bombardier perk. This increases the damage each orb does. Once you do this and shoot the ballista, you should successfully beat the run. Small thing with dropships. Whenever you see a dropship coming, either use your wither cloak or your gyro wand. You should never kill a dropship. Period. No questions there, no argument. If you do this successfully, you should be able to kill tier 2. Now tier 2 takes longer than both burning and basic in my experience, and overall is the worst floor to grind in my opinion. However, it does make more money per hour than basic, making around 15 to 30 million coins on average. Burning tier. For this you need to have 3000 mage or barb rep, and you'll want to have a minimum of combat 50 to get into some of the better parties. This is where the gear shoots up a lot, and there is no exceptions to this. In this tier, you will need both a Hype and a Terminator if you plan on DPSing. Term is the only option unless you are a stunner, which I will get into later. In addition to that, you will need 3 Force Terror and ideally a Precursor's Eye. This is used to kill the boss fast when it is stunned, as it is affected by hits not damage, so do not use a Werewolf. Bouncy arrows are the best when DPSing this, as they have a chance to hit them again. Now this was gear for the DPS, but what about stunners? Stunners ideally want a 655 drill or a Devon's drill, but a gemstone gone that also works. They also want to forge their heart of the mountain tree to optimize mining speed, and if they're having difficult times, they should use 3 4 Golder with a spirit mask. It is helpful, but not required. You also need a 300% mining speed boost ability, so when you get in, you can insta mine the blocks. Now, when you are a stunner, you do not need a terminator, so that is one of the biggest parts and benefits about this. You also need to get a Fire Veil and Gyro if you do not already have this. Gyro's Cells Alignment ability is insanely underrated, and against dropships, it is way more reliable to survive than using a Weather Cloak. This is also the first phase where Aurora becomes an option. If you're going to use Aurora for the stage, you make sure it is at least 10 steer hot or higher with better attributes. Now that we have the gear out of the way, first class strats and what to buy. Again, you will want 4 specialists, and the first two phases are the same. However, you might find yourself needing to buy steady hands more often as the tentacles are harder and you can fish them up slower. Once you've successfully completed both phase 1 and phase 2, you'll get to phase 3, which is different than the previous tiers. For this, you'll want to have 1 stunner and 3 DPS. DPS is the Terminator Precursor Gear setup with bouncy arrows. These guys don't need to charge up the Ballista, assuming your party is doing an insta-stun, they don't even need to shoot orbs into Kudra unless the stunner dies or is ass. Their only job is to get to one of these two spots next to Kudra and use Terminator while spamming Precursor Eye. Only do this when Kudra is stunned, obviously. If you're doing this during dropship, make sure to keep an eye out and use Gyro so you don't die and get hit into lava. Okay, now how to stun Kudra. You'll need to shoot yourself into Kudra and break one of these dangle things. This means you need to buy a human cannibal and use yourself a cannon. Each one of these dangle things has 100% health. Every single time you break a block, it will drop at 5% health, meaning you need to break 20 blocks. However, if you take too long, magma bacteria will spawn, and they are a pain in the ass with damage and knockback that sucks. When you shoot yourself in a Kudra, you should go to one of the pods and use your mining perk ability, the 300% speed one, 
and insta-mined two blocks moving your cursor from one block to another. You cannot mine the same block in a row. Then, once you are done mining all the blocks, you get out of Kudra, and if you have a term, you start shooting him as he sinks down into the lava. For this tier, 3 Force Gold or Inspire Mask is not required, as with Gauntlet and Mining Ability, you can usually stun Kudra before taking any real damage from the bacteria. You can also buy the Mining Frenzy perk if you are struggling to do this. Usually, you want to give more warning before you stun though, maybe saying stunning before you enter Kudra, or R or last before you break the last block. This is the same mechanic in both tier 4 and tier 5, however in tier 4, tier 5 you will want to get the tentacle down to 5% HP, then run around in circles dodging the magma bacteria until your team has loaded up the ballista and is ready. Okay, so during this floor, you will start to experience dropships, and a lot of them. So here is the easiest way to survive a dropship together, or if your entire team is dead, solo. If your squad is alive, it's incredibly easy. Choose a place and everyone will go to that location and take turns using their gyros, which is why everyone should have one, and occasionally pop it with a cloak. With four people, you should easily be able to survive this if everyone's using their gyros. Now for solo. It's much the same for the seven dropship. However, you will want to pop your gyro first, so take care of the first three-ish dropships if done correctly. You then want to swap to your wither cloak and keep wither cloak active until your gyro has recharged. And then once it's recharged, you cancel with a cloak and reuse Gyro. This is the easiest way to survive it. Hopefully with all this information, you'll be able to insta-stun and kill tier 3 Kudra. But if there is a skill issue, you can always incorporate the Ballista in addition to DPS or just DPS it twice. But if you do this successfully and average 2.5 to 4 minute runs, you can make anywhere from 35 to 60 million coins an hour. Again, it depends heavily on the RNG, but it does make a lot more. Now for tier 4 or Fiery. Here are the basics. You will need 9,000 mage rep, and should be at least combat 55, ideally combat 60 to get into the good parties. Although it is incredibly similar to tier 3, the gear requirement needed is higher. You will still need a term, but a duplex term is better. And by this point, unless you have insane storm, you should be using aurora and terror hot minimum, and ideally the aurora should be burning either mana pool 5 or mana regen 5, or both if you're rich. As for the stun, the tech becomes slightly different, and now I would highly recommend Goldor and a Spear Mask with a 655 Driller better. For more info on how to stun, watch the stun section of this video. I briefly go over how to stun tier 4s and tier 5s, as it is different. Tier 4. This tier combines tech from both tier 2 and tier 3. Again, the first two phases are the same. However, I need to preface something. Everything is harder, and the longer your parties take, the harder it gets. Now, what about class setup? There are two methods to be tier 4. Either you can do the exact same thing as tier 3 and just two phase it if you have a good enough party, or you can do it the way it's intended and one phase it with a ballista. If you're planning on two phasing it, all you need to do is have everyone with the maxed possible setup for DPS, I'm talking duplex term, all that stuff. And as long as you have a good skill, you can just two phase DPS it. But what about the one phase method? Specialists are still a must. However, at this tier, we can see more class subs coming into play. No, not healer. Fuck healer. You should never use healer. If you're using healer, it's a skill issue. This is the setup that most fiery parties use. It goes as follows. One cannoneer, one crowd control, then two specialists. You can change this around if you need, but here's what each person should do. Everyone should go to a corner and try to get a prefish off. And if you succeed, great. If you didn't, the crowd control and the cannoneer should run around real quick to see if there's any easy ones or easy supplies in the open or next to the Kudra to try to get an easy fish in. If there is an easy one, great, the cannoneer should go for it. If not, the crowd control and cannoneer should focus on killing the mobs for tokens and continue to keep an eye out for open supplies. The specialist's job is to get the supplies, easy and hard ones. The specialists will work on leveling up steady hands as high as possible as you're going to need it. And then during the ballista phase, they should get it to ballista 3 or 4. Then the stunners can either choose to go for more steady hands if they're being a normal specialist, or if one of the specialists is becoming a stunner, they can buy some of the Mining Frenzy perks. Now what about perk groups for Cannoneer and Crowd Control? For Crowd Control, the most important perk is Blight Slayer. Blights are a pain, and the color of stop signs. For the usual player, green means hit, while yellow and red, they take reduced damage and are pretty much untouchable. With Blight Slayer, this isn't an issue for you. Get this to level 2, then save the rest of your tokens for revives and nukes if your team is in trouble. As for the Cannoneer, the only perk you care about is Steady Aim. Put everything into this. You should never spend it on another perk. And even though Cannoneer suggests cannons, you should not use the cannons. Only ballistas when needed. You will help clear, you will help keep Kudra submerged. You will not use cannons. 
Now for phase three. Odds are, if you want a one phase, you will need the ballista. So here is what you're going to do. You have the stunner, usually one of the specialists. Go into Kudra and get one of the tentacles down to five to ten percent immediately. They will then run around and stay alive inside Kudra until the party is ready. This is why gold and spirit mask is helpful. The other members of the party will work on gathering fuel cells. You only need to gather four for the stage. The best setup I found is that the specialist that didn't stun grabs two as they have steady hands. Then both the cannoneer and crowd control should each grab one of the supplies and make sure the Kudra does not submerge while clearing the mobs. When the final fuel cell is placed, they should say R or something to tell the stunner to break the last clock. Or sorry, block. From there, the cannoneer should get on the ballista and shoot after saying R, then proceed to spam term and tear with your precursor eye. This should be enough to kill him in one phase if your party's good. For the stunner, do not stun when the final fuel cell is placed. Be ready to only stun when the team either tells you they are ready or you see the message cannoneer has mounted a cannon or hear the sound of the ballista going. That is when you break the last block. Other tip. Don't stun if dropship is about to drop. Odds are, if this happens, the DPS will either die or be too focused on trying to live that they won't be able to deal enough DPS to kill Kudra. So coordinate what is happening so everything runs smoothly. On average, I found that virus make anywhere from 40 to 75 million points an hour, but it is a lot harder to do than the previous tiers. Again, it's also a big range because there is a lot of RNG. Tier 5. This is the big boy stuff. The holy grail of money making methods, but has a very steep rec. You need 12k rep and you will need combat 60 if you wish to get into good parties. Now for the gear. For this you will need to get a duplex term, max type, g drag, one build purse to go along with the g drag, and at least one person in your party needs a plasma or sos flare, ideally two but that's not always possible. At this stage you should also be using kudra armor. The two armor sets you need are Burning Tier Aurora, with two of the three following stats. Mana Pool, Mana Regen, or Vitality. As for why no Breeze, in Kudra you will almost never be out of combat for long. And if you are out of combat for long, that means there is no mobs around you. So why do you need Mana Reduction anyways? Whoever is playing Crowd Control should ideally have Fiery Aurora as they're going to be doing most of the clearing. And for the first time in I don't even know how long, you might not want to use Wither Goggles for Tier 5. Mobs in Tier 5 fucking hurt. As such, you should use Spirit Mask and make sure you have survivability when getting supplies. So when you're about to get supplies, put on the Spirit Mask and grab it. Because if you're getting supplies and a bunch of Blights walk up to you without a Spirit Mask on, you are fucked. However, if you are getting supplies and have a Spirit Mask, you'll be fine. But when you're clearing or don't have supplies on, you can switch back to Wither Goggles if you so wish. The crowd control should still use weather goggles. Everyone will also need burning terror armor with the dominance attribute. You can have anything else on it, but best is vitality. This is for the last phase of Kudra. Again, with this, you should also have your equipment with dominance, or at least have a separate set of equipments with dominance on this. Dominance is such a good attribute shard. Now for the stunner. Ideally, you should have a Devon's drill with high mining speed, but a 655 also works. You also need to have a Heart of the Mountain set up for mining speed. And finally, the new thing, you will need a Last Breath. This is again for the final phase of Kudra. Now, for the first time in a while, Reforges. Now, there are two options for Reforges here. The first four phases require you to have a lot of mana, and as such, you should probably be using something like Bizarre, or something that gives a lot of intelligence. However, if you can easily get through the first four phases by struggling on stage 5, you could debate switching your accessories to... Fortuitous, as it gives high crit chance, and you need that when using Terminator. But if you're struggling on stages 1 through 4, stick with Bizarre. If you think you can do it, maybe try using Fortuitous, it might make your runs a little bit faster. Getting to as high crit chance as you possibly can is ideal when using a Terminator, because you need to do as much damage as possible. Just the second option, again, depends what you're struggling on, if you're struggling on the first 4 phases or the last phase. You also need 100 attack speed. But this isn't too bad to get as g drag in term gives you so much already that you just need to begin in like one or two pieces of attack speed here and there and now oh thank god we are done with the gear part now for the perks in the meta the meta is the same as fari two spec one cannon one crowd control the perk tree you should follow is also the same for most people however if the stunner is finding it stunning to be difficult just use the mining frenzy perk instead of upgrading steady hands as high 
but if you can consistently stun with no issues, then don't bother upgrading the Mining Frenzy. Phase 1 strat is the same as the last, with specialists gathering most of the supplies, with crowd control clearing and cannoneer going for easy supplies next to Kudra and helping clear. Phase 2. This is the exact same thing. All members should build the ballista, and when mobs spawn, the crowd control and the cannoneer should go and clear them. If dropship happens during this time, everyone should take turns using gyro and keep on building. If the blazes spawn during this phase, the crowd control should kill them. If they have enough tokens, the fastest way is to use nuke, which will take off 80% of their health, and then they hit every blaze 2-4 times with a Hyperion. With good luck and decent skill, this shouldn't take you too terribly long to achieve. And you'll be on to phase 3. This is basically the same thing as the tier 4. The cannoneer gets one fuel cell and then tries to help out by keeping Kuja submerged. The specialist that is not selling should gather two of the four fuel cells, as he should have the highest level of steady hands. This leaves crowd control to get the last fuel cell. When you have gathered the last fuel cell, you should say something in chat to let the stunner know to be ready soon. This is usually L for last, but can also be R for ready. While all this is happening, the stunner should have immediately gone inside Kyrgyz and gotten it to 5%. When the last fuel cell is in, he should wait for the message, Cannoneer has mounted a cannon. He should then stun and stay inside Kudra's mouth for this phase. Assuming the team can one phase it, if the stunner is inside Kudra's mouth, you will instantly skip the animation and get to the final phase faster. If you fail to one phase it, that is fine. The second time, you'll want to do an insta phase, meaning don't use Ballista. Just have the stunner go in, instantly stun, and then everyone else uses Terror with the Precursor Eye to kill him. Phase 4. This is the last phase of Kudra. For those who have never seen, this is a small platform surrounded by lava and a giant wall. Periodically, Kudra's head will pop out from the lava and you should shoot it with your term and terror equipped. But he has very high defense, so the stunner or the, the person with the worst gear should use last breath to get Kudra's defense down. This takes 5 hits without duplex and 3 with duplex. From there, everyone should use their terminator. Now in this phase, a few things are different. One, if you die, you are dead forever. So be extremely careful with this. As you play, you will see Kudra throw a bunch of items at you on the main platform. This includes tentacles, TNT, and the orbs. So move out of any areas that have color on them and shoot the orbs off the map. Also, if Kudra throws something at you, it's not good, okay? During this phase, no mobs will spawn on your platform, so there's nothing for you to worry about from that. This is basically a minigame from party games, except, you know, it has a lot higher requirements and is more complex. During this phase, you'll want to optimize damage. This means everyone should be using items to boost their damage. This includes SOS Flur, Plasma Flux, Weird Tuba, Sword of Bad Health, Wanda Strength, and the Ragnarok Axe. Also, if your party is rich enough and they happen to have a second turn with Fatal Tempo, they should use that. If not, that is fine. Side note though. If you use Gyro, it will cancel the Ragnarok ability, which is not good. So make sure to only use Gyro if you are about to die. That is the only case that it is worth it. And even then, you should probably use Wither Cloak over it. Because your terror and your equipment, hopefully, has Dominus on it, try to be at full HP the entire boss fight. This means heal after taking any damage, including using the Sword of Bad Health. And with good luck and a bunch of trial and error, you should now be able to beat tier 5 Kudra and make about 125, 120 million coins an hour. Wow, this was a long video. By the way, some of this information from tier 4 and tier 5 was gotten from the Kudra Gang Discord server, so go check it out. It is insanely useful for Kudra and it has its own Kudra guide. Either way, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.